Shane, you are absolutely insane. Just when I thought you couldn't get crazier and make a more off the off the top speaker, bigger speaker, look what we got here, my friends. We are at the Florida Audio Expo show looking at the RBH Sound SVTRS active 8 foot 300 plus pound speaker system and we have Shane Rich the designer and the mad scientist behind these speakers. How are you doing, my friend? Doing great. I'm going to correct you. Seven and a half feet. We wanted to make sure it would actually fit within an eight foot ceiling. <laughs> he knew my current ceiling in my house is only eight foot on the second floor, so he had to make it just a little shorter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is quite the speaker system, but there is a method to the madness. So, guys, the reason why we want to go over about the design and all of this drivers that are in it there's there is rhyme to the reason number one being the first thing is that the fact that these are fully active speakers which means there's no analog crossovers on any of the drivers why don't you talk about what the advantage of going active is for a speaker like this okay sure yeah the primary advantage is that you have direct connection from the amplifier to the speaker drivers themselves so you have no uh, parasitic losses through the passive components um, no phase change in the case of what we're doing we're using uh, an active a uh, crossover system that's done by a very high power DSP unit, uh, does FIR filters for linear phase, and so there's no phase change at the drivers, uh, you know, from one driver to the next, bass, mid range, tweeter. That crossover region is completely linear phase. So, an advantage is that, uh, you know, compared to a passive speaker system, you always have that change in phase as you go into the crossover region. Uh, the advantage to that in this speaker system is just uh, perfect time alignment through the full range of frequencies. And then also because you don't have a transition that's as shallow with a passive crossover you have an actual very steep transition between the drivers with these electronic crossovers it's basically mm -hmm. perfect integration like it it, yeah. it makes it act as one complete system kind Absolutely. of fluidic yeah so uh 108 db per octave between the tweeter and the mid-range or i should say mid-range and tweeter handing off to the tweeter so that type of steep almost brick wall type filter uh just means there's less smearing of the image um, and, and like you said better integration between the drivers so you can't get those kind of steep roll-offs in the passive domain that's why you have to do this in the digital domain with active networks so why don't you tell me about um, what's the DSP front end that you're using and the amplifier front end is it the amplifier classification the power what's what's going on with the electronics of the system okay sure uh, it's a tri-amplified system, and we have 1,500 watts going to the woofers per channel, 500 watts per channel going to the mid-range, 250 watts per channel going to the tweeter. Um, and that's continuous power. Uh, it's really limited by what you can pull out of the wall, quite frankly. So uh, a very high power amplifier system class d full range uh, based on one of the best uh, available existing platforms for full range class d amplification uh, then we go to the uh, dsp crossover uh, unit which again is uh, this unit that we're using in particular is actually coming from the pro audio realm and uh, is one of the more revered uh, DSP crossover controllers for that segment of the market and we're using it uh, in the system here uh, amazing you know sound quality signal to noise ratio all those kind of things uh, that we would expect to have in a speaker system of this caliber so the class D amplifier that they're using in this remember I was telling you guys that class D is the future and there's a handful 
of really good amplifier manufacturers on the market these days, and Pascal is the one that's in this amplifier, and it's an awesome unit. The power supply is fully regulated, so you have full rated power all the way down to almost DC, basically. Yeah. And because it's so efficient, like Shane was saying, you can basically suck all the power out of the wall if you're able to supply it, and it'll work on 220 volt as well, right? It's yes. auto sen and it's auto sensing. So if you have 220 or 120, the amplifier senses that it automatically switches over. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. So it, you know it operates. The subwoofer amplifier portion operates on a 160 volt rail. Uh, the other amplifiers for the mid range and tweety tweeters. Uh, uh, 80 volt rail i believe so you know you've just got all kinds of uh <laughs> gain available in that amplifier to be able to drive the speaker to over 120 db levels you know reference type levels make grandpa simpson's teeth explode with the thx logo <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so so I want to talk a little bit about what's involved with the drivers here. These, you know, they almost look like they're not as big as they are. These drivers are massive. These are 12 inch base drivers at the top and the bottom, flanked by um, three 8 inch mids and then an AMT tweeter. Why did you put base drivers on the bottom and the top of the cabinet? What was the point of that? The real reason, uh, other than just giving additional output, which Gene always needs at bass frequencies. Bassaholic. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so yes, it plays louder, it plays more cleanly at the same comparable levels if you just had two subwoofers, of course. Um, but the, another real reason to go with this design, even if you're not playing the system really loud, is because having that extra subwoofer up top gives you more control in the room and what's happening with the room modes. So uh, the room mode relative to the height of your room uh, is going to be controlled better by having two different positions for the subwoofer. So you're basically increasing the modal density in the room because you have all these base sources coming at you. Mm -hmm. And what I heard when I was listening, no matter where I sat, it sounded, the bass sounded very consistent. Yeah. So it was multi-sub to the max because you have basically four subs in here. And the funny thing about it is just one of these subs, the 1212 was the original, the SV1212, yeah. just one of their subs ex uh, exceeds our extreme bassaholic rating. So now we've got four subs. So every time you double your subs, you add 6 dB more output, because, especially at low frequencies because they're kind of co-located. So you've got a ton of available dynamic range in these subs. In fact, we were playing some Billie Eilish music before, and it was shaking the whole hotel. People three doors down were, compl were complaining, yet the drivers were barely moving. Like, you couldn't even see them moving. When you, don't, when you see a woofer doing this, that means you pretty much reached its capabilities and you've exceeded it, and that's when distortion comes in. These drivers were barely moving. It was just effortless. Yeah. You're right. You know, there's really something, especially when it comes to bass frequencies, about being able to produce them cleanly with low distortion. So obviously having that extra woofer uh, output capability makes a big difference in uh, that effortlessness of the system. So, um, yes, we'd like to encourage everyone to go with the system with the additional woofers on top. <laughs> so why why do we have three mid-ranges instead of one? What was the point of that? Well, for dynamic range, uh, certainly, but also uh, the, uh, the alignment of the driver array factors into, you know, the dispersion of the speaker and ultimately the palpable realism that you get in the sound stage. So you have to have a certain amount of cone area to accu accurately reproduce um, certain frequencies at certain levels, sound pressure levels. And that's a big part of um, making the speaker system sound natural and realistic if you don't have adequate cone area, you reach that, like you said, level of distortion or you start getting a compressed sound, um, your ears may not pick up on it until you experience something that has the kind of displacement 
that can really accurately produce you know live music levels and, and you know it's music is all about dynamics uh, unless you're listening to AM radio, I guess, uh, or XM radio, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, what about what about the AMT tweeter? This is actually a larger AMT than we typically see that's on the market. What's that all about? Yeah, so this driver has um, enough surface area once again to be able to faithfully reproduce. Uh, sound with the proper dynamics in the high frequencies. Oftentimes, you're limited to maybe a one-inch dome tweeter, something in that realm, which is good up to a certain level. Beyond that, you just are missing that dynamic range. You're pushing the driver into distortion. It starts to become fatiguing. Um, so it, even if you have a lot of amplifier power, uh, you still need that available cone, or in this case, diaphragm area to move the air. And, and having that just, again, gives that effortless sense of, uh, and realism that you want in a speaker system. Well, I could tell you guys, we spent extensive time in this room. In fact, probably more time in this room than a lot of the other rooms, just because we enjoyed the sound. And everything we listened to just had effortless, real sound to it never fatiguing the bass was tight i mean yeah here's the cool thing about this not only is not only are you matching all the drivers and getting perfect response but you can actually tune the speaker to the room with all this dsp power so yeah. it's almost like you have your own built-in room correction system yeah it, it can take into account the room uh, we primarily do any correction uh with the response and uh whether it's the amplitude or phase response of the speaker uh it, but it can take into account what's happening in the room as well um yeah so there's so much flexibility that you have uh, in an active system that you don't have otherwise in getting the speaker just right for the listening environment so i have all these thoughts in my head we're in florida we're in tampa not too far away from where i live shane i'm almost wondering if we should just haul these things over to my place now i think we should put them up against the status eight t's that sounds like a good idea gene that would be quite the battle so before we do that, what is the price of this system, passive versus active? Let everybody know the configuration options and prices, if you can remember that. Yeah, sure. So the system, as we're demoing it here uh, in our demo room at the show, is the 70, 75th, 45th anniversary <laughs> uh, special edition loudspeaker system, uh, the SVTRS, and the price for the speakers and the associated electronics that go with it is $45,000 uh, for the complete system. And that's a six channel amp and DSP. That's correct. And uh, that includes us, someone from RBH coming out to do the final tuning on the system. So the 45th anniversary speaker system has um, several things that are different about it. It has, uh, nicer quality binding post it has nicer quality internal wiring um, it, we do some things by mass loading the cabinets that help reduce it reduces any resonance that adds another hundred pounds to the system uh, so there's some things that are a little different uh, the damping treatment in the cabinet is uh, enhanced to also reduce the resonance of the cabinet um, so it is different than the passive version. The passive version of this speaker system is uh, $20,000 for the pair, and that has the passive crossover. Um, still an amazing sp sounding speaker system, and uh, it, you would be able to hook that up to your own amplifier and uh, you know existing system. Any stereo amplifier would run that. That's a good high quality amplifier all right so the next step is to basically take these over to my place and have a little slug fest between these speakers and the status acoustics 8t to see who comes ahead in this battle are you worried i i'm not worried we win either way <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, guys, if you like this video, please thumb it up. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash audioholics. You can come in there and you can ask us questions, suggest video topics you want us to cover next. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.